Hi, welcome. Today's session, I'd like to talk about a topic that's near and dear to me. Not valuation, but Star Wars. Like me, many of you probably grew up on the Star Wars franchise. I saw my first Star Wars movie in 1977, and I haven't stopped since. And it's interesting that this franchise that spread over almost four decades has acquired fans in almost every age group. So let's go back in history. The very first Star Wars movie that George Lucas produced was the fourth episode in a six-episode series, and it turned out to be one of the great movie hits of all time. In fact, adjusted for $2,015, that movie has made more than $3 billion. It is probably competing with just Avatar as one of the largest grossing movies of all time. But the remaining movies were not minnows either. They've all made their share of profits. If you look at the sequence, the second movie came out in 1980. That was The Empire Strikes Back. The third, The Return of the Jedi, if you, if, if you adjust for inflation, has made almost $1.7 billion. And then you had to wait almost 16 years if you were a Star Wars fan for the next three movies to come out. And they come out in 99, 2002, and 2005. Though there was a re-release of the original three movies in the movie theaters. So these are the collective revenues that the franchise has made over the six movies until the newest one. Now, if that were the only source of revenues, it would not be that interesting. There are other franchises, the James Bond franchise, for instance, even the Harry Potter franchise, that have made as much or more than Star Wars has at the box office. What makes Star Wars interesting and different is the add-ons. The add-ons in what sense, the other ways in which the movie has made revenues for whoever owns the franchise. In fact, if you, let's start with the original way in which the movie made money, which is I bought my very first Star Wars movie on a VHS tape. Remember those? The cassette tape? And the, if, you, if you add together VHS tapes, DVDs, rentals, and all the way through streaming, this has been a pretty substantial source of revenues. Almost seven, if you look at the total, almost $7.7 .7 billion in additional revenues that the, the owners of the franchise have made over the last 35 to 40 years. The second, and here's where you really start to talk about money, are the toys and the merchandise that have come out of the Star Wars movies. The first set of toys was sold by Kenner from 1978 through 85, and a few of those, and Hasbro from 95 through 2011, and collectively those action figures and toys have sold almost $10 billion worth, unadjusted for inflation. There are other toys and collectibles along the way, and these are all the legal toys, and of course there were people who illegally made money off the franchise. Then there's gaming. The very first game for Star Wars came out on an Apple II. It was an unlicensed game on a cassette tape. I don't, I've don't. i never played that game. But I have seen the versions that followed. The tabletop game from Kenner, the Atari games. And starting in 92, the, the games that took advantage of the expanded Star Wars universe with all the additional characters. The, so these were the flight, flight games and the shooter games. There have been almost 360 books in the Star Wars series. In fact, between 1990 and 2011, Every year there were at least, in 2014, I'm sorry, there were at least 10 books a year that were Star Wars books reflecting the hold that this franchise has had on popular culture. It's interesting that the one stream where Star Wars has not been able to make money are, are in TV series. You'd have thought that they've been able to make a lot of money on TV series that spun off from the movie. But there have been only two TV series coming out of the movie. The first was Clone Wars, which ran about seven years and really didn't accumulate very much money. And in the last two years, Disney has produced Star Wars, Star Wars Rebels, which is, again, not accumulated much money. So if you look at the add-ons that the movie has made, the DVD rentals, the toys, the books, the gaming, and the other, the collective revenues from these movies over the last 40 years approximately has been about 33.6 billion. In fact, for if you think about the percentage of revenues that came from the box office, only 20% came from the box office, 80% came from the add-ons. And for every dollar made at the box office, here's what the owners of the Star Wars franchise have made from the add-ons. So for every dollar at the box office, they made a dollar 14 in DVD video and streaming rentals, a dollar 80 in toys and merchandise, Dollar twenty, uh, just twenty-seven cents for every dollar of box office from books, fifty cents from gaming, and about twenty-eight cents from TV. Collectively, that's three dollars and ninety-nine cents in add-on revenues for every dollar from the movies. 
Now, of course, Disney acquired Star Wars from George Lucas in, in 2012 for four billion. At that time, I actually valued Star Wars, and I concluded that it was a good acquisition, but I had to draw on synergy at that point because a lot was not known about what Disney exactly planned to do with the franchise. And Disney did announce shortly thereafter that they planned to produce three other movies and other spin-offs from those movies, and the first of those movies came out about two weeks ago when Star Wars The Force Awakens came to the movie theaters with a bang. And a bang that has not let up because 10 or 11 days into the, into the movie, it now looks like it's broken a billion dollars in box office receipts faster than any other movie in history and is well on its way to making $2 billion or more at the box office. So let's assume that you're sitting down now trying to value the Star Wars franchise. You know there are three main movies coming out. One that's just come out, the second one in two years, Star, the Star Wars 8 and Star Wars 9 in four years. And in the middle, you're going to also get these spin-offs. The first is going to be the Rogue One spin-off, which is going to be next year, a uh, Han Solo. And this is still in, in planning, so we don't exactly know what the other spin-offs are, but at least the rumors are it'll be a Han Solo background movie in about three years and a Boba Fett in five years. And so here's what I did. I made my best estimates of revenues from the main movies and the spin-offs, making the following assumptions. I assume that each of these movies on average would deliver about two billion. At this point you're probably saying that's too pessimistic, but remember on the earlier Star Wars movies, the very first one always delivered the biggest revenues, and then you saw a little bit of a drop off. Two billion is still a huge amount of money as a box office. Adjusted for inflation, that's going to be two billion for Star the the movie in the theaters right now. Two point oh eight billion for the second the Star Wars eight movie, and the two point and two point one six billion. So this is a two percent inflation adjustment made over time. For the spin-offs, I'm going to assume that the revenues are going to be only half as much because they're not going to be as big budget. They're not as ambitious. The marketing budget will not back them up. Here's where I had to make some assumptions. I had to make assumptions about what the future would look like in terms of add-ons, and I did start with the historical numbers. First, I did assume that the streaming video would continue more streaming than anything else, and that would make about a dollar twenty for every dollar in revenues from the movies. Why a dollar twenty? Because if you look at the collective revenues from streaming last year, they're starting to almost catch up with box office revenues. And by 2017, it's estimated that the total revenues from streaming will actually be about 20% higher than the box office revenues. So I'm building on that theme and using a dollar twenty in streaming for every dollar from the movies. For the toys and the merchandise, I'm going to draw on the fact that Disney is a master at merchandising. That if the previous Star Wars movies were able to sell a dollar eighty in toys and merchandise, that Disney will be able to sell two dollars. Not a huge increase, but an increase nevertheless. On the books and the ebooks, I'm going to assume a little bit of a fall off because fewer people read. I mean, maybe I'm wrong in my assumption. So instead of twenty seven cents for every dollar, it's still going to drop to twenty cents. The gaming is going to stay at 50 cents for every box office dollar. And I'm going to assume that Disney is going to find a way to make the TV series a little more lucrative and give it 50 cents for every box office dollar. So the, if you look at the very first movie, I'm projecting total revenues of $10.8 billion, $2 billion from the movie at the box office, and $8.8 million, $4.40 for every dollar of box office revenues from the add-ons. And the, that same pattern applies across the other two movies, the other two main movies, and the spin-offs. The collective revenues I'm projecting from these six movies is about $53 billion. Now, if you take those revenues and think about how much money Disney will be able to make, I have to make some assumptions. And you might or might not agree with these assumptions. On the movies, I assume that Disney would earn 20.14% as its pre-tax operating margin. That's about $282 million just from the current movie. Now that might seem pessimistic to you, but that's actually the average margin at across movie companies. And I'm also taking out a 30% tax rate from it. So basically it's 20.14% of the total revenues at the box office net of taxes. I think if Disney can make $281 million just from the box office revenues, it'll be incredibly happy because that's a lot of money to make from box office revenues. It's on the add-ons that you're going to see the real profits. I've assumed a 15% margin on the add-ons. Disney actually is planning to license most of the stuff on which it makes only a 10% margin, but somebody else is going to make the extra 5% at the minimum. So 15% pre-tax margin, again a 30% tax rate, 
that works out about $924 million for the first movie, and you can see it stretch across the movies. The collective present value, and here I use the cost to capital of entertainment companies, 7.61% to discount them back, of just these six movies for the next five years is $4.8 billion. And the game's not going to stop there. Star Wars, as a franchise, actually made $1.5 billion this year prior to the new movie coming out. This franchise has incredible staying power in terms of the add-ons, and I'm going to assume that the merchandising will continue beyond the sixth year, even if no new movies come out. And to estimate the value of the continuing merchandise income, I took the income, the after-tax operating income from the most recent year, which was about 150, I took the revenues from the most recent year, 1.1514 billion, and scaled it up to reflect the fact that these six new movies would bring in additional customers, additional fans into the movie base, younger fans, who are going to be the big buyers of these toys and merchandise in the first place. So what I did was I took the $1.514 billion from the most recent year and scaled it up to reflect the revenues from the new movies, which effectively pushes the $1.514 billion to almost $3.5 billion in revenues per year. Now that might strike you as wildly optimistic, but given how well this franchise has held up, I don't think that's too optimistic a number. In fact, if Disney continues in the series and produces more movies, that's going to be an added bonus. But just adding those two numbers up, the value of the new Star Wars movie and the continuing income, I'm up to $10 billion. If you prefer this as a picture, here's basically all the assumptions captured in one page. It shows you the revenues from the movies, the after-tax operating income, the assumptions are made about margins and cost of capital, and the value of about $10 billion. Remember, this is the value of just the Star Wars franchise. To the extent that Disney is able to get synergy at its theme parks, for instance, you might have read that Disney is actually building an extra attraction, a Star Wars attraction in its Anaheim theme park. There will be other ways that Disney benefits in its other businesses from the Star Wars movies. That's not included here. The bottom line is, if you look at the $4 billion that Disney paid for Star Wars and you add up the stuff that it will get from the franchise, that's going to be $10, $11, 12000000000 billion, and that's a conservative estimate. That's a great bargain. In fact, if you couple with that with the fact that Disney's other big ac acquisition that's paid off in the last 10 years is the acquisition of Marvel and all the movies that have come out of the Marvel franchise, maybe there's a game here that Disney's really good at playing. The game is to acquire a movie franchise, and that franchise can't be any franchise. I don't think Disney can go out and acquire the James Bond franchise and make it a special franchise. The franchise has to has to be family-oriented, at least in the sense that it, it has fans across the age basis, like Star Wars does, does Marvel does. It has to be extendable. That's, that's what limits you when you look at a Hunger Games or a Harry Potter, is the story is being told unless you can find really creative ways. So it, it's got to be an extendable franchise. That's what makes Marvel so valuable. That's what makes Star Wars so valuable. And have significant merchandising appeal. One of the great things about Star Wars for Disney is the fact that George Lucas in his infinite imagination in, in the expanded universe has actually a list of 17,000 characters he's created for the Star Wars expanded universe. If you're a toy maker, can you imagine what 17,000 toys can deliver for you? So if you can think of great movie franchises that Disney can build on, maybe you should send the suggestions on to Disney. I'm a Disney stockholder, and of all the things that Disney has done in the last 20 years, this has been the most spectacular one. I know the ESPN hit was a huge one, but that was accidental. Disney never intended ESPN to be the hit that it was. It was something added on to the ABC acquisition that's paid off big time. But these two acquisitions of Marvel and, and Lucasfilms, less so with Pixar, because I think Pixar, they paid a full price and it's a different kind of franchise. It's a continuing franchise of different movies. But I think on these two, two franchises, Disney has hit it big time. And I congratulate them for that. Thank you very much for listening.